Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your pick a card reading focusing on what you need to hear right now. I'm making this video because when I was pulling cards this morning, I was getting a lot of ominous cards and they weren't matching my energy at all. And I thought that was kind of weird, so I took a minute to just try and figure out what's going on here. And what I was getting was that the collective is so full of anxiety right now that that was actually like coming through in my cards and I was kind of getting a reading for the collective when I had sort of intended to get a reading for myself. I really feel like the universe wants us to know that we're in like a hibernation state. We're kind of at the very end of winter or, you know, the very end of the night, you know, the hour, the cold, dark hour before dawn when everything seems the scariest and the worst. But somebody wants us to know that, you know, sunrise is coming the dawn is coming you know winter is almost over this period of like regeneration this period where we feel like we're just stuck down in suffering and in pain it's there's a lot more to it than that there is actually a bigger picture here that we maybe just can't see and you know the light is coming guys we can see the light at the end of the tunnel and it's going to be okay um i really felt compelled to share this. I know probably only a few people are going to see this video, but that really means that this video is for you and that you and me are syncing up and that's why you're getting this. And if you're getting this in, you know, March 2020 when I'm making it, or if you're getting this years from now, the message is the same. We're in the same kind of energy. And for anybody watching it near the time when I post it, uh, it is significant that we're at the very end of Pisces season, you know, later this week, the sun's going to move into Aries and that is going to be such a like burst of like vitality and health and bringing us back into our bodies. And really it's, you know, it's the spring equinox if you're in the Northern hemisphere anyway, and it's going to really shift things. I think things will start to look so much brighter and more hopeful and we'll have a lot better perspective once we're back into Aries season. So like really over the next week, things are going to start to shift. So um, I think I'll get right into the readings. I think these are going to be relatively brief. We just have three cards here and I might pull some Oracle cards, but we'll just see how it's going to go. Uh, we got pile number one, two, three, and number four. Okay, pile number one. I was right when I said that these messages are going to be pretty brief because yours is really succinct and to the point. You guys have the star, the five of wands, and the princess of cups. So this star, I saw it and it really looks more like a snowflake. That really emphasized to me the, the individuating that goes on in this star energy, because this is also Aquarius energy, so therefore Uranus energy, which is all about individuating so that then you can connect with all of the other individuals around you. And I don't know about where you guys live, but right now, uh, where I live, people are like holding up. Everyone is in like self-quarantine, even though there's not actually any sick people uh, in my town yet but everyone was panic shopping and everyone's sitting alone in their houses right now. And that's pretty, I think I could say that about a lot of the planet right now. People are at home alone or with their family. Everyone is isolating. We have this isolating energy going on. And I think that is actually one of the like energetic things that is happening. We're all going into isolation and in that isolation, we are healing, but we're also developing our individuality like we're individuating we're individuating our consciousness so that eventually once we can come back together we'll all be stronger and we'll be like more specific points of consciousness and that'll allow us to create a stronger web of humanity when we, be, when, you know when we can all come out of our homes and get back to living a normal life in the middle here is the five of wands which is obviously you know that conflict this five of wands is really like nebulous, right? It's like there's all these like beams of light all crisscrossing each other. And there, there's definitely like a conflict energy, but it's not like really clear where it's coming from or who's fighting or even what they're fighting over. And you over here, the princess of cups, you are definitely feeling this conflict energy. You're feeling it so hard. I don't really feel like it's not directed at you, right? You might be actually be living totally fine right now, but you're feeling the conflict and the anxiety and the stress in the collective. So there's definitely a reminder here to not absorb too much that isn't yours. 
Say, stay sitting in your sovereignty, right? Be the star. Sit here. Even if you're in isolation, just sit there and and feel it and kind of go through your, your dark night knowing that you're cultivating your individuation and it's a healing process. So take a step back from this Five of Wands conflict energy because it's not yours and you don't need to be experiencing it if you don't want to. You can observe it and let it go. You can observe all the anxiety in the world and just say, okay, that's happening. I don't need to take it into the deepest core of myself. I can let it go and I can just watch it. I can watch it happen out the window. I don't need to let it inside my home. And I think as, as you're moving forward, what you need to be remembering here is this star. The star is what comes after the tower. So, you know, if you've had a tower moment, you've fallen down out of the tower and now you're on the ground. But that just means that this is your invitation to individuate and to heal and to look to the horizon because better things are coming. This is just your hibernation phase. It's going to be okay. I think that is the message you are meant to hear. And I'm going to leave it at that. Good luck, guys, getting through this, and I hope to see you again soon. Okay, pile two, welcome to your reading. You guys have the Four of Cups, the Ten of Pentacles, and the Seven of Pentacles. So right here with the Four of Cups, you guys are focusing, always with this card, you're focusing on the negative when maybe everything is going really well for you, like mostly, right? Like here, you know, maybe 75% of your life is good. You're focusing on this 25% of life. Maybe it's something you don't have, it's something you want, um, and it's kind of derailing your perspective. So here's an invitation to get your perspective back, right? Don't be sitting here with your head in the clouds, focusing on the one thing you don't have. Focus on all of the things you do have because 10 of pentacles, you have everything you need and, and more. And especially since this is coming after the four of pentacles, there's a message here that abundance and prosperity is on its way. So if you're going through financial hardship, a breakup, a move, or just the general shitty vibes that the planet is experiencing right now, again, this is just saying like, hang in there, you know, spring is coming, everything's going to be good. I think you guys are actually going to have a really, uh, a good summer because seven of pentacles, um, I mean, you can see she's coming out here, she's watering her tree and, and it's growing oranges. So, I mean, I don't typically like to project timelines, but if you're watching this in March 2020, then I would say that this 10 of pentacles is on its way this summer. And through the spring, you're going to be going through, like maybe through this winter, you've really been going through kind of a, you know, sludgy energy that you didn't quite like. And through the spring, you're going to be watering your garden and really helping your seeds grow. You're going to be literally growing this like orange tree. And uh, then by the summer, the tree will be blooming and blossoming and bearing fruit. And over the summer, you're going to be coming into your Ten of Pentacles. That was a pretty brief message, but I think that is actually the point of this video. That's what I was kind of called to do, just to inject a little bit of a little bit of light into anybody who's feeling uh, like they're surrounded by darkness. But I would like to pull a moon card for you guys. What do we got here? Meditate and contemplate new moon in Pisces. I love that this came up for you guys with the seven of pentacles. Because Seven of Pentacles, for me, is always this meditative waiting state, right? Here she's growing her, she's basically watering her garden and waiting for the seeds to grow, um, which is kind of a unique depiction of the Seven of Pentacles, but it's that same thing of waiting, like watching and waiting. In general, Seven, seven of Pentacles to me, like a lot of decks actually show it as somebody meditating. And when I get the seven of pentacles a lot, I know that's a sign for me to just sit, cultivate my inner, my inner growth, my inner, my inner vision, my inner vision. That is the word that I'm uh, really feeling here. You're cultivating your inner vision and like you can see this tree growing. So there's, this isn't, so whatever, you know, your 10 of pentacles, which I actually just covered up here, which is kind of perfect. Um, I did that without thinking. The 10 of pentacles is so on its way, but it's not 
you know, quite, quite yet. It might be six months out, you know, it might be happening this summer. So, but it is totally on its way. And in the meantime, you're invited to sit, um, sit in stillness, sit in silence and observe everything happening around you. Um, enjoy what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have and know that, you know, your tree is bearing fruit and abundance is on the horizon, guys. Um, specifically with this meditate and contemplate, you know, if you have a meditation practice or you've been thinking of developing one, that's definitely, this is a sign. Um, go for that. That would be a beneficial thing for you to do, but you don't need to like formally meditate, uh, in order to sit in this energy, just take it easy. Don't worry about social, so, so, blah, blah. don't worry about socializing too much. You can cocoon up in a cozy blanket in your apartment and know that all of the weaving is being done underneath the surface and it's going to be coming up out of the ground and coming to light later this year, guys. So just watch and wait for now. But you'll be receiving your abundance when it's time. I think that's all I'm seeing here. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 3, welcome to your reading. I had intended to only do three cards for each spread, and I actually counted them out pretty carefully when I was shuffling, but somehow a fourth card snuck in for you guys. So we're going to roll with it. And actually, when I was flipping them up and I saw that death came up, um, I understood why uh, you guys have four cards, because I almost think that this death card is like, even though it's the first one, this is the, the extra card. And because I feel like this death card happened like recently like this is something you're just coming out of you have been through some kind of transformation and you are right now rising like the phoenix because death is not an ending death is just a transformation typically into a higher more transcendent state and look at this right after death is the chariot and you are launching so man and even i like how the light like streams out of the death card and up into this so you have been through some kind of I don't know how painful it was, how painful these death transitions are really depend on how good you are at riding the waves, right? They can be really, really painful if you are kind of new to them. But once you've been through a few of them, you can learn to ride the waves. And so however painful it was for you guys, you're just now coming out of that and you're launching like you're, you're fucking flying in the sky with your arms in the air. This is an like the chariot. What an awesome card to get after death. It is such a charging forward, flying in the sky, just pie in the sky energy. So you guys are, <laughs> are in a great place after your transformation. Um, and you're really riding. I think, I feel like you guys are really taking advantage of like the transformational energy, like the wave, you guys are riding the wave up and up and up, which is definitely what you want to be doing. You don't want to be sitting there being traumatized by your, by your death. You want to be trying, you want to be capitalizing on it and taking that energy and using it to project yourself upwards. So this is, this is great. <laughs> Six of cups. Um, this is, I actually see this as kind of like a low key card in this spread. Um, it's just telling me that you guys are going to be almost like reaching, reaching the horizon and finding that it's great. This is just like, it's a soul family card. I, I see you guys like having a, a moment you know, whether that moment is a literal moment or like even a few months of just taking it easy, enjoying your time, um, like giving yourself a chance to heal from whatever your death transformation was. And really when you're sitting there on the beach sipping margaritas, really soak that up because nine of wands telling me that this is a little bit of like exhaustion, like you feel like it was all a little bit too much and like you're making your last stand and you don't know if you're going to make it to the finish line. Don't worry, guys, you are going to make it to the finish line because whatever happened with this death card is in the past. And if you're feeling kind of like butter scraped over too much bread, you know, as Bilbo would say, if you're feeling just tired and fatigued because of everything that's been happening to you, don't worry about it. <laughs> you guys got this because your harvest is coming. The nine of wands, you're so close to the goal. You're like just moments from the finish line. If you think of if you've ever ran any kind of race, 
like the worst part of the race is like, you know, the last 10 meters before the finish line because you're so tired and you just want to lie down and give up. But don't do that. You're, you're so close. The nine of wands is always just like do whatever you need to do to dig deep and find that last little like well of strength and suck that up and just just plow ahead, guys. You're so close. You've almost got it. I'm going to pull a divine animal card for you guys. Let's see. Connection, tarantula. I really like this because I was looking at these cards and leaving it on the nine of wands felt like incomplete, right? Because after the nine of wands, you want to know what comes next, like what happens when you reach the finish line. And here is our answer to that. You are going to be connecting. You're going to be becoming part of the cosmic web. This is this tarantula card is a real feminine energy and it's really, really like it's really deep. <laughs> OK, um, think of all of the ways you can connect on all levels. That's what you're going to be experiencing. So connecting with, you know, your friends and family on one on one level, connecting with all of the different levels of yourself, you know, your subconscious, your super conscious, your higher self, all of your alternate selves all of the different layers of your higher selves, all of that, you are going to be weaving it all together and you're going to be creating like your, your interdimensional neural network of your own selves, <laughs> if that makes sense. And you're going to be having opportunities to connect with kind of the human population on a grander scale. I really getting the sense that since you had to go through this death transformation and then the chariot card came right after it, You've recently been through something that is propelling you forward into your life's mission. This, I don't really usually talk about life missions, but I think this is part for you guys. This is what's really coming through. When you went through your, like when you died, you know, when you metaphorically died, whatever happened to your life recently, that was setting you, you up in to be able to connect to make all of these connections on such a grander scale. And you're going to be figuring out why you came to earth, why you chose to live the life that you've led. And suddenly, well, I mean, not suddenly, slowly over the next while, everything that you've been through in the past will suddenly make a lot more sense. And you will realize that the things you suffered weren't like you you will find you won't need to be traumatized by your past anymore because your past will be gaining context you'll be connecting with your own past and you'll see how your past connects to your future that's the that's another layer of this cosmic web everything will make sense you will be gaining such a broader perspective and context And this will help you figure out what your purpose is. You will know how you are meant to serve yourself and the collective. And you will find that serving yourself and serving the collective are the same things. When you serve yourself, you help the collective. And when you serve others, that also helps yourself. Wow, guys, you're going to be gaining perspective on like in a massive, massive way all the myriad facets of yourself, all the strands, all the strings, everything's going to be coming together. I think I'd like to leave it at that. Good luck on your project, guys, whatever it is. I hope to see you again soon. Hey, pile four, welcome to your reading. Out of the four piles, I think you guys are having the hardest time right now. Ten of wands, two of wands, and nine of swords. So... When I flipped these up, the first thing I felt was that this two of wands is actually really connected to the 10 of wands and almost like it's a compounding energy. Like if there were a 20 of wands, that would be you guys. Like the 10 of wands is that card of burden, but also the card of harvest, right? You're only burdened because you have finally, you know, worked all through the summer and it's finally harvest time and you're finally bringing in your crops and then, you know, you're going to be all set for the winter. But for you guys, I feel like you have really, really like gone way above and beyond, you know, what you should have done. 
it's it's a burden and a harvest times two. You guys are so tired. You feel like maybe you just can't, <laughs> you can't even like you guys don't know how to how to pick yourselves up and how to brush your teeth and how to, you know, go to work for one more day. You're just so tired. I can feel myself just like, like slouching um, as I tune into your energy here. So, and nine of swords, I mean, we all know how that that is just, you know, she feels like she's being attacked by all of these swords. She's sitting here curled up in a ball. And I mean, we've all sat like this, right? Sort of like sitting up in the fetal position. And she feels so attacked. She feels so alone, so isolated. And a lot of the attacks are coming uh, like psychically or psychologically, right? Which to me kind of amounts to something very similar. But either you're sitting there trapped in a loop of your own negative thoughts, um, just sitting there thinking about how everything is horrible, everything is horrible, all the things that can go wrong and you can't think of anything positive. Um, or you are actually being like attacked by parasites, like etheric parasites, or some kind of entities that have it out for you that they're feeding off of your negativity. And I see these things as really closely linked because even if the thoughts begin as your own negative thoughts, once you start spiraling in those for too long, you know, they can create parasitic thought forms that continue to feed off of your, your negative spirals. They feed off of those energies or somehow you, you know, had some parasites attached to you and you know they're spiraling this out and when i talk about parasitic attachments i don't want anybody to like too much freak out because basically everybody has them at some point um i lived most of my life with like a whole host of horrible parasites leeching off of me and i had no idea because i didn't know anything about any of this right i had all kinds of other explanations for what was going on and obviously if we're talking about, about parasitic attachments and their connection to anxiety, that they're never the only thing. There's always more causes. Nothing is ever just one cause in my perspective anyway. So don't like start panicking just because I said parasitic attachments. <laughs> just please, um, you know, I, I lived with them for a long, 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 long time and I survived and I got rid of them and I'm fine. <laughs> so don't worry about it. And in my head right now, I keep thinking about how I think that a lot of my parasites were like inherited from like my mother and my grandmother and my great grandmother. And that's as far back as I know, but for all I know, it can go, that might go generations upon generations back. Um, I mean, I think I inherited them both just because I chose to be born into this bloodline where I knew that I would be taking this on. And also just because growing up, my mom and my grandma were like so judgmental. I mean, I love them and they really have hearts of gold deep down inside. But, you know, they also have these atta like parasitic attachments that they can't shake. And one of the way that manifests for them is just being so critical and judgmental about everybody all the time. Like you literally can't drive drive down the street with them without them like seeing somebody on the sidewalk and they just start like criticizing them. Look at that lady. You know, she's so fat. Or look at her hair. What is she thinking? Or what is that woman doing with her life? And it's just like incessant. And, you know, having grown up with that since I was so small, uh, really left an imprint on me to the point where I thought everybody was like that. And I thought that whenever I walked down the street that everybody was like driving by was like, you know, shit talking me because that's what my mom and grandma do. <laughs> um, so that, that little like anecdote there might be relevant to somebody. Um, take a look at how you have learned to like replicate negative thought patterns that you grew up around. Um, and as for this thing about parasites, know that you can get rid of them. I mean, you can seek help from healers and shamans if you want, if that resonates, but you don't have to, you can get rid of them yourself and it doesn't actually need to be that difficult. Um, there are two levels, kind of the passive and the active here. Um, passively, if you just keep, keep your head down and keep working on your own, psychological, mental, and spiritual evolution, as you heal yourself of all of your past pains and traumas, and as you raise your consciousness, these things will fall off of you just naturally because they won't be able to like handle the amount of light that you're holding. Um, 
So on the one hand, you can just kind of live with them and keep doing what you're doing. And eventually they will just go away and you'll be good. <laughs> kind of, you know, like different types of worms that we can have in our body. You know, a lot of them, they just run their course and that's it. And you didn't need to do anything about it. But if you feel like you want to take a more active role in getting rid of them, um, I mean, you can find any number of like guided meditations and vis visualizations online to help you um, get rid of them. But what I do is when I, I imagine lighting them on fire, I incinerate them. Um, for me, I have, or for a while there, I was like getting attacked by these entities in my dreams. And I could tell that these, like they were dreams, but they weren't normal dreams. I think you guys know what I mean, right? They were very lucid and these like entities would come up to me and they would look Sometimes they would look like people that I know, but I could tell it wasn't like that person, right? I could tell this was like a malevolent entity or they would look like kind of like worms in suits, <laughs> but how you see them in your dreams, if you are seeing them in your dreams. And if nine of swords tells me that in your dreams, you are, you know, being assaulted by parasites. What I do in my dreams is I was actually shown to just light them on fire, just burst them up. You know, if you can, Realize this when you're dreaming. If you say, hey, this this guy's trying to get me, just burn him up, light him on fire. Blast him with light, blast him with a laser. You know, the the actual way you visualize it isn't important, but the thing is you're you're imagining burning him up. And that'll <laughs> that'll take care of that. Um and if you don't want to be that violent about it, you can imagine like opening a window and like a wind blowing the entity through a window and then just closing the window um, with the intention that, you know, that entity, you're not killing him, you're not burning him up, but you are sending him back where he's supposed to go, back to his home. Um, I've heard some theories about some kind of parasites that they've ended up in our, our universe and this is like a hell world to them. You know, they weren't parasitic where they came from. They've ended up here through whatever kind of shenanigans and this is a hell world to them and they're just trying to survive. And of course, then they've ended up being all these horrible things. So if you can send them home that way, you know, for those of you who don't want to be, you know, burning up other beings, even if they are parasites, you can just send them home and they will typically want to go home. And if you can just open that door for them and send them home, then they'll be gone and you will have helped them get back to where they're supposed to be and back to where they don't have to live parasitically and you'll have freed yourself from them. Um, so those are two strategies. The other thing you can do is you can either go into meditation and visualize this, or you can just sit there and visualize it. If you don't meditate, um, you know, do whatever works for you. Um, imagine like scanning your body and looking for where the parasites might be. You might see them like as like slugs wrapped around certain areas of your body. You might see them as like little splotches or ticks in your aura or around you. Again, so many different ways of visualizing this and seeing it it'll be entirely unique to you, but just experiment with ways of looking for them and getting rid of them. And you can also just like sit there. If you want to just take a general approach, just sit there and intend that you're going to expel the parasites from your body. And like, imagine yourself like glowing as like a ball of light and cause light is what gets rid of these things. So long tangent, I don't really want to be putting myself in a position of, you know, spiritual teacher teaching people how to get rid of parasites, but I guess I just did. Um, <laughs> I guess I was called to do that. And I hope this is helpful to at least one person. I think it will be to at least one person. I think that is why I had to do this. So I don't know, guys, I guess take that as you will follow your own guidance and inner inner, follow your inner vision, your inner guidance and your intuition when it comes to this kind of stuff. And let me see. I think a few Oracle cards for you guys. Um, okay. Two Starseed Oracle cards. And then I think a Moon card. And I just put them here and then I'll pop them all up. And Moon. <laughs> this one flipped up. Your commitment is being tested. Yeah, like you guys, like your commitment is being tested. First quarter moon in between this 10 of wands and this nine of swords. 
yeah. So whatever you guys are going through, whatever exhaustion and like conflict you're, fa you're facing, this is almost like a rite of passage. I don't really like thinking of things as like, you know, oh, the universe is testing me. That kind of thing, that feels kind of juvenile and like a paradigm that humanity should be leaving in its past. And most of you tuning into this, I think that mentality of being, you know, a teenager who's being tested, that's that's in the past. But what this what we still have here is almost like a, a rite of passage where when you designed the trajectory of your life, you put certain obstacles in your way so that when you figured out how to overcome them. And once you struggled through them, once you get to the other side, you will be so much stronger and capable. And it's such a learning experience. It's not about testing you, testing your commitment or testing your like skills. It's, it's not about the test. It's about the learning, right? Sort of like how schools should be. They shouldn't be about the test. They should just be about your personal growth and learning experience. So <sighs> this 10 of wands and nine of swords, guys, this isn't going to be forever. Just know that sooner or later, you'll be able to look back at this period in your in your life and understand why you chose to go through it. Yeah, you guys are going through like a major, major pivotal moment in your lives and maybe even a pivotal moment through like a whole like, like group of your lives. Everything's kind of been coming up to this. And that is why you're so exhausted. Let's see. I'm sorry. Defenselessness, writing past wrongs, and uprooting. I always feel that this I'm sorry card goes both ways. I mean, especially because look, there's two of them. And this is um, really kind of goes with that two of wands. So, you know, on the one side, you might be understanding things that you did in your past that, you know, that weren't that weren't great. You might be able to go, hey, you know, I reacted in a certain way and that wasn't the best way for me to react. But you're learning to forgive yourself because <laughs> you can understand kind of why you reacted the way you did. You know, we can't always react in the best of ways. So you're learning to forgive yourself and you're learning to forgive everybody else for whatever they did that you had trouble kind of uh, dealing with. On the other side here, we have it's almost like the universe is saying sorry to you for putting you through all this shit. We have like, it's, this is almost like, it's like you and the universe are hugging it out. You know, like when friends and lovers or families or whatever go through like a really bad, like, you know, arguments and fights and conflicts. And then eventually like everybody all gets together and like hugs it out, you know, sort of at the end of like a full house episode. <laughs> um, that's what's going on here. So this is like this, like, he, this I'm sorry this it's a healing it is so healing because you're gonna you're going to be able to put all of this shit behind you and move forward with a fresh slate final card big picture thinking Pleiades energy visionary inspired ideas guys this is now I know why I had to pull uh, these three oracle cards for you. This is where this is all going. See this portal here, this archway? You're going through this portal because you've got your harvest. You're dealing with your anxieties. You're making your peace with the universe. And then you're going to be going forward. And I love that this uh, Pleiades energy is coming through here because the Pleiadians have such trouble like with suffering because where they're from they don't they don't experience suffering and pain and anxiety and depression not like we do not really at all so Pleiadians, when they're here on earth they suffer a lot and they suffer a lot unnecessarily because they can't like let it go and they almost feel like they have to suffer that if and if other people are suffering they have to suffer too they really really struggle to let pain go you know, that Buddhist idea that, you know, pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. That might be something you guys need are, are learning right now, that it is possible to feel pain and to go through painful experiences, but you don't need to, like, take it to, like, the most, like, horrible level. You don't need to suffer always because of it. You can experience the pain and then move on. 
you can see other people in pain. You can do what you can to help them. You can empathize with them. And then you can take a step back and you don't need to like let that suffering consume all areas of your life. So just whatever you guys are going through, know that you're getting really close to going through this portal. And if you're watching this when I post it, if the equinox is coming up, the March equinox, so spring or fall, depending on what half of the globe you're on, um, I really see the equinox as a portal and you guys are going to be going through it. So that's in just a few days for those of you watching this now. So get ready, guys, because... I feel like the equinox will be really transitional and transformative for you. And that is when this is all going to start to shift for you. So charge forward, forge ahead, go through your portal, and then you can leave all of this pain behind you. And I think I'd like to leave it at that. Happy equinox, guys. Hang in there and get ready for some major shifts. Hope to see you again soon.